Good morning students. Today's topic is physiology of pain. So pain is the most common thing which we all experience it daily in our day-to-day uh, -day life. So in any form, one or the other form we experience pain. So it is very important in our real life and also uh, according to the subject, we need to know the physiology of pain. So what is pain? First, the definition of pain and then the types. So various things we will see in today's class. So this pain will be covered in two classes. So today is the first part of pain physiology. So the learning objectives for today's class are the definition of pain, types of pain, pain receptors, that is nociceptors, their distribution and properties, and ascending pain pathways, visceral pain, uh, deep somatic and referred pain, mechanism of pain recognition and perception. So how the pain is recognized by the cerebral cortex and how it is perceived by the central nervous system. If you see the definition of pain, it is derived from Latin word peony and Greek word poiny, meaning penalty or punishment. It is defined by the International Association for the Study of Pain as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. So there is an international association for the study of pain. So only on the pain there is an association which is international. So see how important it is. It is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential so actual means actually there is a tissue damage and potential means the damage may take place. So uh, described in terms of such damage. So that is an sensory and emotional. Both the components are there. Sensory and emotional components are there. And it is also described in other words, it is an unpleasant subjective. So it is a subjective experience that is net effect of a complex interaction of ascending and descending nervous systems involving biochemical, physiologic and psychological and neocortical process. So you remember this one and also one more uh, definition is there which is given by Sherrington as pain is a psychical uh, adjunct psychical means pertaining to mind and adjunct is that is addition or join to psychical adjunct of an imperative that is urgent very urgent imperative protective reflex so pain is a protective phenomenon because it indicates the morbidity earliest indication of morbidity so uh, the, it is expressed in various languages and various terms by different people. So they have their own description. So it is, uh, a, we can define the pain according to Sherrington as psychical adjunct of an imperative protective reflex. So the types of pain based on source, location and referral duration of the pain. Uh, we can classify it into these many types acute pain or traumatic pain and chronic pain and in acute or traumatic pain we have visceral or splanchnic pain and then somatic somatic means pertaining to skin and superficial structures and in somatic pain we have superficial or cutaneous pain and deep somatic deep somatic means uh, inside structures that is muscles tendons bones joints so all those are deep somatic pain and in chronic pain, we have malignant or cancer pain and non-malignant or benign pain. In non-malignant, again, we have musculoskeletal and neuropathic pain. So these are the various types of pain we have. Apart from the various types of pain we have seen, so we also have fast pain and slow pain. So fast pain is felt within 1.1 uh, second after a painful stimulus. And slow pain begins after one second or more and then increases slowly over many seconds or minutes. And fast pain is bright, sharp, localized sensation. Slow pain is dull, intense, diffuse and unpleasant feeling. And fast pain is sharp pain, pricking type and acute and electric pain. 
and slow pain is burning type, aching type, throbbing type, and nauseous pain and chronic pain. And fast pain is felt mainly in skin and it is not felt in most deeper tissues of the body. And slow pain it can occur both in skin and almost any deep tissue of an or an organ. So I'm just reading out because we can it, it is easily understood the differences. And fast pain is produced because of pin prick cutting or burning of skin and slow pain is associated with tissue destruction. Fast pain is caused by mechanical or thermal stimuli. Slow pain is caused mainly by chemical stimuli. Fast pain is transmitted by A delta fibers, velocity of 6 to 30 meters per second. And slow pain is transmitted by C fibers, velocity 0.5 to 2 meters per second. Neurotransmitter for fast pain is glutamate and for slow pain it is substance pain. And the uh, tract or the pathway which carries the fast pain is neospinal thalamic and the slow pain uh, tract is paleospinal thalamic. So we will see these uh, things in the coming slides. So fast pain is transmitted by A delta and slow pain by C fibers. So remember this. Fast pain by A, del A delta and slow pain by C fibers. So acute pain. It has a sudden onset, usually subsides quickly and is characterized by sharp localized sensations with an identifiable cause. The, so the cause is identifiable and localized sensations, sharp localized sensations are present and it is of sudden onset and usually subsides quickly. And it's lasts, it lasts more than 30 days but less than 3 to 6 months and occurs after muscle strains and tissue injuries such as trauma or surgery and is described as a linear process. And a poorly treated pain can cause psychological stress and compromise the immune system due to the release of endogenous corticosteroids. So if this pain is poorly treated, it can cause stress, psychological stress and compromise. The, so because of stress, the immune system is caught compromise due to the release of corticosteroids. So if, we, if you remember the effects of corticosteroids, it has an effect on immune system also. So because of stress, the hormones, uh, corticosteroid hormones are released and which will have impact on the immune system. So the immune system is compromised. So pain should never be neglected. So it is a protective uh, pain. It is a protective reflex, but then it should not be neglected. It should be treated. Chronic pain. It is arbitrarily defined as pain lasting longer than 3 to 6 months. So acute pain is more than 30 days to less than 3 or six, three to 6 months. Whereas chronic pain is longer than 3 to 6 months. And it begins when pain persists after the initial injury has healed. And it is persistent or episodic pain of duration or intensity that adversely affects the function and well-being of the patient. So it is persistent or episodic. Persistent means continuously present and episodic means for short periods of time, for short durations it is present and adversely affects the functions and well-being of patients. So definitely it will affect the, because suppose if it is present persistently, it will affect the functioning and well-being of the patient. It may be nociceptive, inflammatory, neuropathic or functional in origin. It varies from unrelenting, extremely severe pain to pain of escalating or non-escalating nature. So extremely severity to uh, escalating or non-escalating nature of pain. So escalating means increasing in severity or intensity. So extremely severe to pain of more uh, which we can't express in words. So that extreme. So neuropathic pain, which is a type of chronic pain, it is a result of an injury or malfunction of nervous system. It is described as aching, throbbing, burning, shooting, stinging, tenderness or sensitivity of skin. So in these various terms, it can be described. It is a result of injury or malfunction of nervous system. So neuro means nervous. So neuropathic pain. 
So mechanism is nerve damage or persistent stimulation of nerve resulting in rewiring of pain circuits both anatomically and biochemically causing spontaneous nerve stimulation, autonomic neural stimulation and increased discharge of dorsal horn neurons. So these three, any of these three may, take, uh, may be present in one person or three may be present or one or two, any of them may be present resulting finally in neuropathic pain. And the musculoskeletal type of pain, this is a type of chronic non-cancer or non-malignant pain occurring due to musculoskeletal disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, fibromyalgia and peripheral neuropathies. So rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease, osteoarthritis is a joint disease which is most commonly present in knee joints and other uh, joints also, fibromyalgia, this is muscle disorder, uh, diseases. Uh, and peripheral neuropathies, the peripheral nerves are affected. And depending on the source of origin, we can still classify uh, the pain into superficial, deep somatic and visceral pains. So superficial is a pain arising from skin and mucous membrane and the deep somatic pain is uh, originates from somatic structures deep to skin. Like uh, I have told you, you know, the muscles, tendons, bony structures and their joints. So from them, uh, the pain arising is called deep somatic. And visceral pain is a pain arising from different internal organs or viscera. So if we see the origin of pain or where does the pain come from? So for cutaneous, it is a sharp, bright, burning sensation, so which can be caused due to a prick or injury. So it can be fast or slow onset. And deep somatic, so as I have told you, it is arising from tendons, muscles, joints, periosteum and blood vessels. And visceral pain originates from internal organs and it is diffused at first of its appearance and later it may be localized like appendicitis and psychogenic pain the individual feels pain but the cause is emotional rather than physical so coming to the visceral pain it is a type of nociceptive pain that comes from internal organs unlike somatic pain it is harder to pinpoint so visceral pain is uh, difficult to exactly localize and pain is described as general aching or squeezing pain it is caused by the activation of pain receptors in the chest, abdomen or pelvic areas. In cancer patients, pain is caused by tumor infiltration, constipation, radiation and chemotherapy. So the causes of visceral pain are ischemia, chemical stimuli, spasm of hollow organs and over distension of hollow organs. Ischemia is the substances released during ischemic reactions like bradykinin and proteolytic enzymes stimulates the pain receptors of viscera. So ischemia means loss of blood supply. So during the, uh, suppose any organ is uh, having loss of blood supply or due to blockage or any uh, obstruction to the blood with blood flow to that organ. So there will be reactions taking place releasing uh, bradykinin and proteolytic enzymes. So which will stimulate the pain receptors of viscera and chemical substances like acidic gastric juice leaks from the ruptured ulcers into the peritoneal cavity and produce pain and spastic contraction of muscles in gastrointestinal tract and other hollow organs of viscera cause pain by stimulating the free nerve endings and over distension of hollow organs also cause pain so whereas uh, all the viscera are uh, in some or other way sensitive to pain but there are some parts which are insensitive to pain they are liver parenchyma lung alveoli brain tissue visceral pericardium, visceral peritoneum and visceral pleura. Okay, so this may come as MCQ for you. So the insensitive viscera for pain are liver parenchyma, lung alveoli, brain tissue, visceral pericardium, visceral peritoneum and visceral pleura. So we have seen various types of pain. So some uh, types of pain which are of special interest are intermittent claudication and inflammatory pain. So what is this intermittent claudication? 
so it is a recurrent pain in the calf muscle so calf muscle the lower limb muscles back of the lower limb during exertion and which stops on rest so recurrent means it is uh, coming and going coming and going in the calf muscle during exertion while uh, exertion means while the person is moving or uh, doing any hard work and on rest on taking rest the pain stops so this is due to ischemia of the muscle which produces p factor so it is also called lewis p factor so ischemia of muscle why because of continuous contraction of muscle the muscle is not able to receive uh, enough blood supply so that will cause production of lewis p factor the pain producing chemical agent which is which is responsible for the pain during rest the pain stops because p factor is washed away by blood so this type of pain is most commonly seen in a disease called Berger's disease or thromboangitis ob obliterans. So this is present in your fine layer general medicine or surgery. So but for now you just know the reason for muscle pain or ischemia of muscle produces Lewis P factor. This P factor is a pain producing chemical agent which is responsible for the pain in this patients and that pain is called intermittent claudication and other type of pain is inflammatory pain it is due to increased tension causing pressure on nerve terminals as well as due to release of a chemical pain producing factor so increased tension causing pressure on nerve terminals produces inflammatory pain so it is this type of inflammatory pain is seen in uh, diseases like rheumatoid arthritis uh, and this is usually associated with hyperalgesia that is increased pain sensation and then coronary occlusion in addition to p factor there is release of 5-ht 5-hydroxytryptamine that is serotonin and plasma release of 5-hydroxytryptamine and plasma pain producing polypeptide so in coronary occlusion there will be release of these factors and this will cause pain nerve pain partial compression of nerve or nerve root leads to irritability of nerve or nerves concerned and gives rise to formation of areas of hyperalgesia and paresthesia so compression of nerve or nerve roots leads to irritability and then uh, formation of areas of hyperalgesia and paris so this is the most common experience uh, uh, if you keep uh, your hand under your head for a long time you will experience numbness so that is paresthesia and then ischemic muscular pain due to release of p factor during active work on accumulation causes pain the p factor may be potassium or kinin repeated muscular contraction compress the blood vessel and causes the release of this p factor so it may be potassium or kinin which is responsible for the production of pain the receptors for pain are called nociceptors and these are the free nerve endings of small myelinated a delta and non myelinated c fibers so these are present in the skin and other tissue so where they are present <laughs> in the superficial layers of the skin they are widely spread and also in other uh, tissues like periosteum arterial walls joint surfaces fax and tentorium of cranial wall so these areas they are present and widely spread in the superficial layers of the skin so all over the skin anywhere if we give a prick or uh, any pressure definitely all we all see the experience the pain so they are present all over the skin sparse in other deep tissues and they are non-adapting in nature so in the previous uh, receptors class i have told you the adaptation property of receptors the types of nociceptors are three categories a delta mechanical polymodal c fibers and other category so in a delta we know that the name is because of the receptors are the free nerve endings of a delta fibers these fibers will carry fast pain and they respond to mechanical stimuli 
and polymodal C fibers. So these are the nerve endings of C fibers which carry slow pain and they are poly polymodal because they respond to various types of stimuli like mechanical, chemical and also thermal and other category have thermal and vanilloid receptors. So thermal uh, uh, thermal receptors are the A delta fibers and C fibers respond to strong mechanical stimuli. And uh, there are other types of uh, receptors in this uh, category that is CMR, cold and methanol sensitive receptor and also vanilloid receptors. So these are VR and VRL receptors. So these are re described recently and they are named as vanilloid because they respond to vanillin, a pain producing substance that contains a capsaicin uh, product, capsaicin. And so these do not only respond to capsaicin but also to increase temperature and change in pH. So these are the TRP family of ion channels. So these vanilloid receptors are TRP that is uh, transient receptor potential family of ion channels. And then if we see the specificity of nociceptors, many theories are present to explain the specificity. So that is how much they are specific to the pain sensation. So first one is specificity theory. It just states that pain sensation has a specific modality, specific receptor and specific pathway in the central nervous system. And overstimulation theory. It explains that pain results from overstimulation of various types of afferent nerve endings. So according to this theory, it can be transmitted via different afferent pathways. And pattern theory is uh, the pain sensation can be elicited by the stimulation of receptors by a particular pattern. So if we stimulate the receptors in a particular pattern, it can be the pain sensation can be elicited. But in over all these the three theories, the specificity theory is much uh, accepted by the uh, by all. So it states that the pain receptors are specific and the pathway is specific and the uh, sensory modality is specific. So these are the theories of uh, nociceptors. And then if we see the effects of pain, so we have. Uh, two components, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic response of pain are paler, increased blood pressure, increased pulse, respiration, skeletal muscle tension, and diaphoresis, that is excess sweating. So these are the sympathetic responses of pain. And the parasympathetic responses are decreased blood pressure, decreased pulse, nausea, vomiting and weakness, paler, loss of consciousness. So paler comes under both sympathetic and parasympathetic, and loss of consciousness. So mostly we all, uh, at, one, at some point of time, we have experienced some or more of these symptoms. And the nerve fibers involved in pain transmission are A delta, sorry, A fibers, in that we have A beta and A delta fibers, and then C fibers. In A beta, we have large myelinated fast conducting, low stimulation threshold and respond to light touch. And A delta fibers are small, lightly myelinated, slow conducting, respond to heat, pressure, cooling and chemicals and sharp sensation of pain. And C fibers are small and unmyelinated, very slow conducting, responding to all types of noxious stimuli and transmit prolonged dull pain and it requires high intensity stimuli to trigger a response. So these are some differences of the A, A fibers and C fibers. So C fibers slow pain, A delta fibers fast pain. So these are lightly myelinated and respond to heat, pressure, cooling and chemicals. The pain will be very sharp in specificity. And C fibers are unmyelinated, very slow conducting. So this is slow and is C are very slow than the A delta. In A delta and beta, we have uh, compared to A beta, A delta are little slow. So but if we compare A delta and C, so this is fast. And respond to all types of noxious stimuli. 
and it transmits prolonged dull pain. So these are the um, different types of fibers. C fibers and myelinated A delta, uh, some myelination is present, and A beta uh, completely myelinated. So the pain pathway is consisting of three neurons and dual ascending pathway. So there are three neurons, three order of neurons. So first order, second order, and then third order. So there are three neurons in the dual ascending. Why dual? So both the A delta and C fibers. So both the fibers will travel in the same pathway. So it is dual ascending pathway. So two pathways. Uh, one is neospinothalamic and other is paleospinothalamic. The neo is fast, sharp pain that is A delta and paleo is slow, chronic C fibers. From peripheral receptors to spinal cord, we have uh, A delta and C fibers for fast and slow pain respectively. And from spinal cord to brain via anterolateral spinothalamic tract. So that is neospinothalamic and paleo. Neo is old, paleo is new. So one is for fast and one is for slow pain. So these are the uh, one picture of pain pathway where you can see this fast pain fibers. And this is the reticular formation and slow pain fibers. So, which will enter into the thalamus first entry from the spinal cord. So, these are all the second order neurons. So, this is the nucleus of the thalamus, <coughs> various nuclei of thalamus like intralamina nuclei and ventrobasal complex and posterior. So these uh, two types of fibers, slow fibers and fast fibers, will travel and enter into the thalamus. And the pathways for pain sensation are. Uh, various pathways are present from skin and deeper tissue. So, we, uh, the most commonly studied pathway is uh, spinothalamic, lateral spinothalamic pathway that is for skin and deeper tissues and which we will see in the coming slides and pathway for fa from face. It is carried by trigeminal nerve and from viscera, uh, from thoracic and abdominal viscera are transmitted by sympathetic nerves and from esophagus, trachea and pharynx by glossopharyngeal nerves. And the pathway from pelvic region, it is conveyed by sacral parasympathetic nerves. <coughs> so, neospinothalamic. So, the pain it starts with receptor and ends with the cortex. Okay, so the free nerve endings, uh, the fibers are the A delta fibers, and these will be entering into spinal cord. In the spinal cord, we have 10 laminae called rexed laminae. So the first layer of uh, spinal cord, lamina marginalis, and from there through spinothalamic tract, it enters the ventrobasal complex of thalamus via the reticular formation. And finally, it reaches the somatosensory cortex and other areas. <coughs> and then paleospinothalamic. So here also, free nerve endings, peripheral C fibers, and but the spinal cord, the fibers will enter into lamina 2 and 3, that is substantia gelatinosa. And through the spinal thalamic tract, it enters the reticular nuclei, ductal area, and periaqueductal gray region. And thalamus. So these are the main things in the paleospinothalamic, whereas for neospinothalamic, we, we will see that uh, the thalamic area is important. And finally, it reaches the thalamus, hypothalamus, and other basal areas of brain. So it does not reach the paleospinothalamic uh, somatosensory cortex. There is no need for reaching there. So in thalamus and hypothalamus itself, the pain is being perceived. So the first order neurons carries impulse from receptors to spinal cord. And in the spinal cord, they enter the dorsal horn and rises in the tract of lizard. So this is a tract of lizard which is present in the spinal cord. Uh, and the fast or sharp pain, that is neospinothalamic, it terminates in lamina 1, lamina marginalis. And second order neurons start here in the lamina 1. And the neurotransmitter is glutamate. And the paleospinothalamic terminates in lamina 2 and 3, which is called substantia gelatinosa, and also interneurons and lamina 5. 
so in all these areas it will terminate and the second order neurons again start here and the neurotransmitters are substance p for slow action glutamate for immediate action so this picture you can see the transmission of both types of pain signals into and through the spinal cord on their way to the brain okay so the entry into and through the spinal cord and crosses to the opposite side so this is the main important feature of the spinothalamic tract it enters the spinal cord and then it crosses so not at the higher level in the spinal cord itself it crosses to the opposite side in second order neurons carries impulse from spinal cord to thalamus or brain stem the fibers cross immediately to opposite uh, side through anterior commission and the termination of fibers takes place mainly in the thalamus for fast pain ventrobasal complex and few fibers to brain stem and slow pain the five few fibers to thalamus intralaminar nuclei and mainly to brain stem so this is the main feature of this slow pain so main fibers many fibers will end in the brain stem here many fibers will end in the thalamus and also somatosensory cortex so the brain stem there are reticular nuclei of pons medulla and mesencephalon and tactile area of mesencephalon and periaqueductal gray region this is important periaqueductal gray area so the second order neuron consists mainly of the nociceptor specifically uh, in lamina 1 and also wide dynamic range neurons in lamina 5 so the nociceptor specific neurons serve only noxious stimuli but wide dynamic range neurons also receive non noxious afferent input from the a beta delta and c fibers cell bodies are present in spinal cord and medulla oblongata so the spinal cord gray matter was divided by rexed into 10 lamina rexed is the name of person the first six lamina which make up the dorsal horn receive all afferent neural activity and represent the principal site of modulation of pain by ascending and descending neural pathways lamina 2 also called the substantia gelatinosa contains many interneurons and it is believed to be a major site of action for opioids Lamina 5 contains WDR neurons responsible that is wide dynamic range neurons responsible to both responds to both noxious and non noxious sensory input and receives both visceral and somatic pain afferents so these are responsible for referred so in this picture you can see the various lamina the first six lamina and a delta fibers uh, ending in the first lamina and DRG fibers, uh, C fibers, ending in the second and third, and also some fibers of A delta ending in fourth. Third order neuron carries impulse from thalamus to primary sensory cortex according to topographical representation of body. So this is the primary sensory cortex, and the uh, this primary sensory cortex is stimulated. The person becomes aware of the pain. so these are again the third order located in thalamus sends fibers to somatosensory area 1 and 2 in the post central gyrus of parietal cortex and perception and discrete localization of pain takes place in this cortical areas so the spinothalamic tract axons of most second order neurons cross the midline close to their level of origin to the opposite side before they form spinothalamic tract they send their fibers to thalamus reticular formation nucleus raphae magnus and periaqueductal gray matter and this tract can be divided into lateral and medial so did you get this spinothalamic tract so the axons of second order neurons cross to the opposite side at the level of origin before they form the spinothalamic tract so these fibers send information to thalamus reticular formation nucleus raphae magnus and periaqueductal gray matter the lateral spinothalamic tract projects mainly to the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus and carries discriminative aspects of pain such as location intensity duration and dermal sensation and whereas the medial spinothalamic tract projects to medial thalamus and is responsible for mediating autonomic and unpleasant emotional perception of pain touch and pressure 
Okay, so the difference between lateral and medial or anterior spinal thalamic tract is this. So they uh, they carry the discriminative aspect of pain such as location, intensity, and duration, and also the thermal sensation for lateral temp spinal. So pain and temperature are for lateral spinal thalamic and the medial or anterior spinal thalamic responsible for autonomic and unpleasant emotional perception of pain, touch and pressure. And most neurons from the lateral thalamic nuclei project to the primary somatosensory cortex and those from intralaminar and medial nuclei project to anterior cingulate gyrus and mediate the suffering and emotional components of pain. And then coming to the most uh, common type of pain, that is referred pain. It is defined as the pain sensation produced in some part of body and is felt in other structures away from the place of development, called referred pain. The deep pain and some visceral pain are referred to other areas, but superficial pain is not at all referred. So the main gist of the referred pain is that pain is produced from the viscera but it is felt at some other uh, somatic structure so examples for this are heart pain is referred to inner aspect of left arm so heart and left arm inner aspect of left, left arm so you can easily remember because they are placed nearby and diaphragmatic pain to the tip of the shoulder so diaphragm is here beneath the lungs and it is projected to the tip of shoulder ureteric pain to the testis in male and inner aspect of thigh in female. So testis and inner aspect of thigh in female. Gallbladder pain is referred to epigastric region. And pain from maxillary sinus referred to uh, nearby the tooth. And the kidney pain is referred to uh, this left side of the uh, pelvic region. So these are the most common areas of referred pain. So chest, heart is... Uh, arm, shoulder and arm, inner aspect of arm and esophagus is this heart area and stomach, liver and gallbladder, appendix and then the kidneys. So the areas are uh, referred pain areas. When the miserable pain fibers are stimulated, pain signals from viscera are conducted through some of the neurons that conduct pain signals from skin and the person has feeling that the sensation originates in the skin itself. Okay, so the mechanism is that when visceral pain fibers are stimulated, the pain signals from viscera are conducted through some of the neurons that conduct pain signals from skin. Okay, so the visceral pain signals are conducted through the pain signals from skin and the person has feeling that the skin actually originated in the the pain has actually originated in the skin but the pain has actually originated from viscera so that is the so the mechanism for localization of uh, referred pain is by three types uh, dermatomal root role of experience and transmission pathways that is visceral and parietal. So the skin uh, is affected in acute appendicitis. So the dermatomal rule is the most commonly accepted and rule of experience is because of past experience of pain. So the person will be uh, again getting that referred pain. And transmission is the neural transmission of the pain. So during embryonic development, the diaphragm migrates from neck region to its adult location between the chest and abdomen and takes its nerve supply, the phrenic nerve with it. Similarly, heart and arm have the same segmental origin and testicles have migrated with its nerve supply from primitive urogenital ridge from which kidney and ureter has developed. So these are the dermatomal rules. So the dermatomal segments are seen for the uh, skin part, dermatome and then the organ, visceral organ. So during embryon, embryon, embryonic development, diaphragm migrates from neck region to its adult location, carrying the phrenic nerve with it. So that's why the diaphragm pain is referred to tip of the shoulder. 
and then some other theories are present for referred pain that is convergence theory convergence means many fibers are converging on a one pathway the number of peripheral pain afferent fibers exceed the number of lateral spinothalamic tract so both the somatic and visceral afferents converge upon the same spinothalamic neurons at the spinal cord level hence when visceral pains impulses travel in the same pathway along with impulses from skin the individual gets feeling that pain originates in the skin itself so in facilitation this is one more theory for uh, referred pain so here viscera and somatic pain afferents or the fibers connect with separate but adjoining that is side by side spinothalamic neurons and there may be some overlap of these neurons so the visceral afferents have collaterals connecting to the spinothalamic neurons receiving somatic pain afferents so from somatic the fibers are coming from viscera they are coming so there will be some overlapping of the neurons so this causes impulses to travel up the somatic spinothalamic pathway and cause the sensation of pain in the skin so both are travel via the spinothalamic pathway and this will cause the sensation of pain in the skin because of uh, the pain sensation or because of actual pain present in the viscera and how this pain is transmitted to brain okay so the pain signal start from the receptors and through the afferent nerve fibers in the spinal cord they cross to opposite side and ascend in the spinal cord reticular formation and the lamus and finally to the cortex so the mechanism of pain it involves a series of complex interactions between nerves peripheral nerves and central nervous system so pain sensation is modulated by excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitters released in response to stimuli so this sensation of pain is composed of four basic processes transduction transmission modulation and perception so what is transduction pain stimuli is converted to electrical energy so thus that conversion is transduction the stimulus sends an impulse across a peripheral nerve fiber that is nociceptor transmission is a delta fibers and c fibers which transmit different types of pain perception is the awareness of pain cortex identifies the location and intensity of pain person unfolds a complex reaction physiological and behavioral responses are perceived and the inhibitory neurotransmitters like endogenous opioids work to hinder the pain transmission this inhibition of pain impulse is known as modulation that is changing its form that is pain its severity is not felt or its uh, uh, intensity is decreased by some endogenous opioids so this is the picture of uh, showing transduction and transmission perception and modulation modulation is inhibitory and excitatory so it can be inhibited at this point or it can be increased in sensitivity by the excitatory substances like the substance p k glutamate aspartate calcitonin gene related peptide cholecystokinin vip so these are the excitatory neurotransmitters and inhibitory neurotransmitters are serotonin norepinephrine opioids gaba somatostatin and galactin so that's all we have come to an end of our today's class so in this class we have seen the pain definition types of pain and then uh, receptors the classification and then we have seen the pain pathway which is the most important topic of today's class and then the referred pain and different uh, mechanism or the mechanism of pain recognition and perception so the substances uh, which are excitatory and inhibitory for the pain so there are Uh, all chances for essay questions short and very short and mcqs from this uh, topic of pain in today's class so each and every slide is important so repeat again the class and then make your own notes and practice the diagrams the pathways you should get it all the flow charts and the diagram of pathways so practice the diagrams so uh, for today's assignment 
draw the pain pathways in your in a paper or in your notes assignment notes and send to me the pictures in uh, telegram okay uh, thank you all